Now you can also listen to us on your favorite podcast with just a search, Faith Temple and Cog. Listen on the go with your favorite streaming platforms, like YouTube, Spotify, Audible, Apple, Amazon Music, Google, Facebook, iHeartRadio and TuneIn. If you would like more information about us, you can visit our website at www.ftnfcog.org. Join us Sunday at 11 a.m. Online giving made easy with Giveify. Try it now. Like and subscribe to our YouTube page. Go to youtube.com slash at ftnfcog. I know Elder Wright has a word and know y'all pretty much everybody know him, but people that don't know him, he uh, has uh, proven himself, amen, to be a man of God, amen. He, hallelujah, is a servant. I think he's more of a servant, hallelujah. Uh, most people think he is. Thank you. Amen. He is a uh, servant of the living God. Amen. So amen. I'm going to leave it alone and uh, let, let him have his way. Let God use him this morning to speak amen. a word to us. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Good morning, everybody. Even, morning. Though, I can't see, even though I can't see you. Good morning. But I just give God the glory and honor for it. Who he is in my life, and I just bless him for what he has done. And I was just thanking God. Um, think about what Mother Vicky um, said earlier. Um, that's we take things for granted. That's thinking about you know the the shooting, and just think about how many times we have been to that place. And I was thinking about when uh, one of the teachers told me about the drowning of the little boy, and I was also thinking about how many times I have took it students there to learn how to swim and things that we just take for granted um, how God has had his hand on us and how he, much he has uh, kept us. This um, morning I have several scriptures uh, and I'm going to figure out how to, to do it, but I have several scriptures and the first one's going to be Acts chapter 8 verses 26 through 31 at chapter 8 verses 26 through 31 and it reads <clears throat> and the angel of the Lord spake unto Philip saying arise and go toward the south unto the way that goes down from Jerusalem unto Ghana which is desert and he arose and he went. And behold, a man of Ethiopia, a eunuch of great authority under Candace, the queen of Ethiopia, who had the charge of all her treasures and had come to Jerusalem from to worship. He was returning and sitting in his chariot, reading Isaiah the prophet, then said, Spirit, said unto Philip, go near and joined ourselves to his chariot. And Philip ran thither to him and heard him reading the prophet Isaiah, saying, Understandest what understandest thou what thou readest? And he said, How can I, except some man show should guide me? And he desired Philip that he would come up and sit with him. Father God, we bless you. We thank you right now for your word. We glorify you, Father, for who you are. Uh, we ask you right now to open up our hearts and our minds, oh God. You speak your word unto your people, Father, in the name of Jesus, God. Speak with understanding to you with power and authority, Father, that you have placed in me. Father, I give you glory, I give you honor, and I give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. The topic I have would be... Do you understand what you're seeing? Do you understand what you are seeing? And a couple of things that uh, came across my mind uh, with Bishop been doing these lessons. Uh, He's been speaking 
from Ephesians chapter 1, um, verse 18. And the first part of that verse has been sticking with me for a couple of weeks now, where it says, the eye of your understanding be enlightened. And they've been sticking, I guess, in my spirit for a while, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened. And I was seeking God of what the message would be for the day. And he gave me, do thou understand is what you are seeing. And how Bishop has been teaching week after week about the, the hope of his calling and the hope of his, uh, the riches of his glory and his inheritance. And uh, and continue to, to, to pour out before us. And I'm saying to myself, God, am, am I grasping what he is telling us? Are, are we really grasping what is being said to us over and over and over again? And God was just saying that the first part of that scripture, again, when it says the eye of your understanding being enlightened. And he was saying, if your eyes do not become open to the understanding. The rest of that verse, you are not going to have an understanding. You're not going to understand right. that ye may know what the hope yes. of the calling and what the riches of the glory of his heritage is. And he said that we have to come to a point to understand what we are seeing, understand that we are his people, that we are called by him, that we are the hope of his calling, but we have to have an understanding of what does that mean. And right. so he kept just putting that in my, and like I said, that scripture been, the, the first part of that scripture has been just rolling over in me for the last couple of weeks. The eye of your understanding, be enlightened. We have to be enlightened in understanding. And God gave me the, the scripture in Acts about the Ethiopian man when he was reading in the Bible and he was studying it and he was reading it, but he didn't have a clear understanding of what was going on. So the, the Holy Spirit told Philip to go to him. And he when Philip heard him read, he asked him, do you understand if what you are reading? And he said, the main part is, no, I don't understand what I read. He said, how can I? How can I understand this unless someone guides me? And the Holy Spirit is saying that he is here, not, not saying that Bishop and, and, uh, and me and other people are not here, but the Holy Spirit is telling us now that the Holy Spirit is here to guide us, to give us complete understanding so we can right. completely walk into knowing what the hope of his calling and knowing the riches of his inheritance, knowing all that uh, the Bishop is trying to uh, oppress in us for the last month now have the understanding and 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 i've been dealing with it myself and god said if you don't have the 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 the, the holy ghost don't enlighten you and give you an understanding of it it's going to be a same routine over and over again we look and we see here in um uh, the uh the things that uh john chapter 14 verses 25 and 27 it says, these things have I spoken unto you, being yet present with you, but the comforter, which we talk about, which is the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things, bring all things unto your remembrance, whatsoever have said unto you. This is where the, the, the Holy Spirit that's been dealing with me to, I have to allow the Holy Spirit to give me understanding we, we often read that scripture that leading up to our under, on our own understanding but but how many times did we we still try to figure things out on our own and how figure out things on on our own stuff and and the holy spirit was like no i'm here to lead and i'm here to guide you i'm here to direct you i'm here to bring the truth to your to your eyes i'm here to pour down the scales off your eyes so you can truly see what I am saying unto you so you can truly see as a people what I have for you, what I'm saying for you. Because we also have here in, in, and I said I have several scriptures, in John chapter 16, verse 13, it says, How be it, when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. 
for he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. God is now the Holy Spirit that dwells in us to open our eyes, but we have to be able to allow it. We both have to be able to seek him and allow him to do that so we can have that understanding. God is telling us that he wants us to allow the Holy Spirit to enlighten us in his word. God is telling us that he's wanting the Holy Spirit to enlighten us in the things that we are doing so we can go forth. We, we see a whole lot of things, but we don't have a clear understanding of, of, of things that are going on. It, it was um, it was funny to me, but it wasn't. Um, I had my glasses were broke for so long that I had went. Um, by the time I had to make a doctor appointment, they were so backed up. It took almost six months to have a doctor appointment here because they were so busy. And I had tripped myself in my head saying that I really don't need glasses. I can see fine. I've been doing this all, all this time. I have been seeing fine. I can see, I can read, I can do everything. I, and I really don't, you know, for, for my job, pre say, um, I can still pass the um, eyes down without them. But after I got my glasses and all of that and I put them on my face, I started looking around and I was seeing how much I was missing because my eyes was not open. My eyes was not completely open. I thought they were. I thought they were, but then when I actually started seeing each blade of grass, in my mind and in the sharpness of it, like I, I knew the grass was there. I, and you know, you cut the grass with a boot. And when I actually started seeing each single blade of grass, when I actually seeing each single leaf showing, my eyes were enlightened. And I was saying, oh, I really do need these. I, I felt like I was okay with all but oh, I really do need these. These really are helping me. I'm seeing the world for for what God really created it to be in, in, in our natural sense with these on. And the Holy Spirit are spiritual glasses. Lord, he, it, 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 it helps us open our eyes that we can see what the word of God really is. We, we, we speak these things. We, we say these things. And sometimes we even see these things. But we really don't have a comprehension of what, these, um, what God will really is. We have a concept of it, but we really don't understand what it is. So the Holy Spirit brings it to all truth. So we have to rely on on the Holy Spirit, and like Bishop said, and like everybody said, it's not just speaking in tongues. If you think that the Holy Ghost is just speaking in tongues, I'm telling you, you're going to be in a lot of trouble. Because I have known people um, who spoke in tongues in one, one moment, and then the next minute, they was cussing somebody out. And I'm looking at them like, how in the world? But they, but we, you found out that really wasn't the Holy Spirit. They were just a, a form of godliness that they were denying the power thereof. But if you think that the Holy Spirit is just speaking in tongues, you are uh, uh, really misunderstanding what the Holy Spirit is. It's there to bring you into all truth. It cares to bring you to the knowledge of what God has called you to be. I don't care how many prophecies somebody has prophesied over you, the word or whatever somebody has spoken over you, and the word will, will come to pass, but if you don't have the Holy Spirit to allow you and to guide you and to give you knowledge and understanding of it, it is for not, even the Bible says even prophecies have failed. If you do not rely on the Holy Spirit, if you don't rely on what it is teaching you and what it is telling you to do, then you are going to be in trouble. We have to allow the Holy Spirit to enlighten us in all that we do. We have to have, allow the Holy Spirit to be our guide. We have to allow the Holy Spirit to be um, the, the things that we need. We have to allow that to be. The, the, the uh, First Corinthians chapter 13 Verse 11 and 12 says, when I was a child, I speak as a child, I understood as a child, I thought as a child, but when I became a man, I put childish things away. Verse 12 says, for now we see through a glass darkly, but then the face to face I know in part, but when then shall I know even as I know I am known. What this is saying is, when we think a certain way 
and, 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 and even childhood, even in adulthood, when we think a certain way that we think we know every day, but when the Holy Spirit come, we, we before the Holy Spirit come, we was looking through this glass darkly. It was it was fuzzy. It was um, unclear. We 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 saw things and we fit where well, maybe this is what God means. This maybe that's what God is saying. Maybe this is what God is doing. And we was looking at it in a certain way, but we wasn't looking at it clearly. We didn't see what God was really saying. We weren't really seeing what God was really doing. But when the Holy Spirit comes, he will clear out everything. The same thing that was going on with, with uh, Paul uh, uh, when he was persecuting the, the, the saints. When him and Jesus had a meeting on the road to Damascus, God put scales over his eyes and he was blind physically. And you know, when he went there and the Holy Spirit and they prayed over him, the scales fell off his eyes and he saw God for truly who he is and true who he was. We have to be in that spot now that we have to take down every our own thoughts and our own mind and our own wills of what we say God is or what we think God wants us to do in our lives. And we have to put in the Holy Spirit. I remember when I first came up here and I was struggling. I don't know, but I was working, I was driving for one um daycare and I was driving for Richmond County and I was driving for somewhere else trying to get in meet to get the you know the for um rent and the other stuff and I was remember I went to the church where we had a church building and I was laying before the altar and praying and, and I was doing my wars me's God what 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 I'm doing I can't do this and I can't do this you know you got a light bill do you even got a gas bill do you know you know how the song go and the Holy Spirit stopped me and said I did not call you up here for this I did not call, this is not why I called you up here. If you do what I called you to do, you don't have to worry about anything. If you do what I called you to do, you don't have to worry about the things of, of the world. I will take care of you. But when our mindsets are in one place and our mindsets are in uh, other, another thing, and we will forget if we won't see what God wants us to see. The enemy, he only wants us to see the bad. The enemy on us only want us to see the wicked stuff. The enemy only want us to see the the the, uh, the bad stuff in church. To have the the pastor stealing the money and the the deacons doing this and the church mothers always talking about people and and all of this and and and, uh, and that's why I want to come to church now and the and the, the uh, pastor's wife doing this and all of that. That's all the enemy wants you to see. He all he wants you to see, but when you Allow the Holy Spirit to take the scales off your eyes. When you allow the Holy Spirit to enlighten you, you will see that this is the enemy trying to mess up God's people. This is the enemy trying to tear, stir up something. And you will lay before God and you will pray and you will intercede on their behalf. Many people always used to ask me, like, why, why are you allowed this to happen? Why are you allowed that? I said, I'm going to pray before God. I don't have nothing to do with it. I lay it before God because the enemy wants you to see one thing, but God wants you to see the whole picture. We always say, you know, that um, we are a piece of a puzzle. We are our a piece of a puzzle, a piece of God's plan. And we only see our little bit, and but we don't realize that when God puts us together in a panoramic view, he sees the whole picture. We only see the little picture. I was thinking about earlier um, that how that the, the disciples, each one of them had a, their own plan. And God picked every, each, each 12 of them for his purpose. And they was born in the right time because God already knew what they was going to do and when he was going to place them there. And God has already settled it in heaven what it was, I hear Pastor Paul speaking right in now, before the foundation of the world, we, he already had it in mind and in plan, but we look at it like we see a small piece, a little small piece, and we're trying to figure out why am I here, what am I doing, but God has the big picture, and we allow the Holy Spirit to lead us to all truth and our understanding, and don't worry about the little things. God will take care of it. But if we don't have the Holy Spirit to enlighten our minds and to, to lighten our hearts and enlighten what He wants us to do, then we're gonna have an issue. Now, for for example, uh, it, it's funny. For example, my mom, my brother called me this morning, and when he called me this morning, I answered the phone. He said. Everything all right? Mom was just worried about you. I'm like, okay. She said, I've been calling you, and I've been calling you, and I've been calling you, and you ain't answered the phone. I'm like, and I looked at my phone, like, you ain't you ain't called me, Mom. 
And I guess she'd been calling me for a couple of days. And normally, and I apologize to her because normally I do try to call my mom at least once a week. But school has started back and there was a lot of stuff and I was just, in the sense, really busy. But I, I didn't normally, we, we talk at least once a week. And she said, I've been calling you, I've been calling you, I've been calling you. And so my brother called me this morning and he said, you know, mom, be kind to call you. And I'm like, she ain't called me. And she said, I was about to call Lisa. And I was about to tell Lisa to give me Bishop Nance's phone number because I was about to call him. And I and and, and, and I was like, no, I'm, I'm, I'm okay. But she said, I ain't heard from you. I ain't heard from you. She said, I was about to call Lisa. And my brother, when they had called me, I was about to call Lisa and tell her to give me Bishop Nance's number. I'm about to call him now. So I'm about to go check on my child. And, 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 and we looked and we found out for somehow... My old number got back in her phone. We had put my new number in there, but somehow it got back in there. Like, but and so when she heard my voice, she was like, "Okay, I'm okay now. I'm okay. I'm okay. I just hadn't heard from you. I'm just checking on you." That's the same thing. We have way we should be. And, and God, we need to check on God, Holy Spirit. What you what you doing? Because because we always God always He told me one time like like we always want Him to come when we answer, but do we come when He answer us? I mean, um, God wants us, do we come when he calls us? We always want him to come when we call him, but do we come when he calls us? And 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 the compassion that my mom had to make, I haven't heard from you. I haven't, in her, her, in her perspective, in her eyesight, it, she was like, something wrong. I've heard from, from Lance, something wrong. He ain't called me this week, something wrong. I can't get in contact with him. I'm about to call the police. I'm about to call and somebody. I can't somebody. I can't get in contact with him physically. I'm about to get somebody, Lisa, somebody about to call Bishop. Bishop, I'm about to come to the house or call the police. Somebody about to get the 202 grab a pit roll and check on him. I have not heard from him. And in that sense, in her in her mind, that was going on in her mindset. Because she she did not know she know how we are let the imagination flow. Sometimes we got to cast down there, but we that imagination flow. And I understand she's my mom. She's like, I have not heard from you. I'm gonna do whatever it is. I haven't heard from you. Call me somebody. And, and we we tried to get my brother. He he couldn't figure out how to put my number back in there. Something happened. How she got my old number? She never erased it or whatever. But in that in that time, my mind was rolling. When I saw that my brother had called me, because normally they don't call me on Sunday mornings, because they know me getting in and ready for church. And normally the only person who called me on Sunday mornings is Mother Vicky, because she'll call me to ask me to uh, do some songs, because she says she can't, she don't feel like singing. Can you do some songs? And then I get some songs ready, and then she ended up singing anyway. But normally, you know, I don't get a phone. You no, know, on Sunday, you know, I'm getting the phone call. You know, I'm thinking this is an emergency, and they say I'm be just checking on you because we had not heard from you. The Holy Spirit wants to be able to speak to us. We should be able, we should be wanting to hear from the Holy Spirit. We should be able to want to hear from God that's speaking to us about this situation. God, what should we do? Where should I go? And 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 be having an understanding of this is what God wants us to do. Because he wants us to be enlightened. Bishop keep telling us this, and this is the second year because this was last year. God gave him the same message, and here we are again for not uh, something that we miss because we don't let the Holy Spirit to continue to grab hold on us. If we don't let the Holy Spirit to enlighten us, we're gonna be in the same loop over and over again. And then next year, Bishop or whoever gonna be, we're gonna be here again, saying God still wants us to grab the hope of the calling. What something something's going on. And, and we all have questions. I, I always, I have questions. Every once in a while, I talk to Bishop. What, what, where Faith Temple going? What, what's going? What, where now? God going? What, what are we doing in, in the sense of the promises that God has spoken over us? The, the word that God has spoken over us are, are, are we where we supposed to be? What, why is uh, so and so leaving? Why we don't have so and so anymore? Why did so and so pass away? You know, we all have these questions. And we got to trust God and rely on him and say, God, you have to lead and guide me in understanding of all this. I can't go with my own master. I can't go this, you know, just found a scripture in the middle of the Bible and just put that in. Oh, that's where it go. No, we got I got to read it with context. I got to understand the Holy Spirit. What do you want? What do you want? Because I had another message. 
in mind. I, I have found, um, I, I have the piece of paper that Mother King gave us years ago, almost 14 years ago, Mother King gave us, and they had the scriptures up there, and I was looking at that, and that's what I thought I was going to do. And when I started praying, um, God gave me, do you understand what you're seeing? And then I had to stop and just see what he was telling me and where he was going with that. We have to rely, let the Holy Spirit rely on, we have to rely on the Holy Spirit, excuse me, of what he is telling us to do. And not just rely on our own thoughts. So, yeah, 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 we done heard this before. Yeah, 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 we done read this scripture before. Yeah, 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 I know what, I know what this is. We have to continue to rely on him every day. Every day, every way. We rely on him. Knowing what he wants us to do. Knowing how he wants us to do it. Are we in a waiting period or or do you want us to go forth in, in other things? What do he wants us to do so we can have a clear understanding and see what he wants us to do? Sometimes God tells us to do things and we think we're going to jump ahead and, and do it, do it our way. And we get in trouble and we, we mess up because we just heard that we just heard go. It's almost like somebody, almost like people said they're going to build a house and one person on their way to Lowe's right now, picking up wood, and somebody going where getting paint, and somebody else going somewhere else, and nobody sat down and, and drew up a blueprint. Nobody sat down and, and said, this is where I want the bathroom at. This is where I want the kitchen at. This is um, how, how we going to dig up the foundation. But we are already run, running around going to Lowe's and getting paint and getting wood, and, and everybody coming down, done different things, and nobody has sat down and looked at the blueprint. Nobody has sat down and had a conversation of how should we go forth in this? How should we go forth in doing what we are, God is calling us to do? And like I said, God has spoken words over all of us. But we have to allow the Holy Spirit to preach and to teach us. We have to allow him to go forth in it. We have to uh, allow him to call to be able to call on us so we can go see him and to seek his face, to seek his face, to hear what he is saying to us, to understand so we can have that, so we can have that knowledge, so we can know what he is calling us to do, so we can know what he's telling us to go, so we can have that comforter that knows that, it is there, and when he says it, it's, it's going to be done. I don't have to. I don't have to worry about when it's going to be done or how it's going to be done. I just know that he's going to do it, and he's going to show me how to do it. I'm have to live in his way and do what he has called us to do. I have to bring out myself and lay myself before him, and let him take control of what um, he wants me to do. I. I uh, it, it's always like that, you know. We can continue to even lay down our own selves, and and it was funny that when Wednesday Bishop asked me, "Was did you mind preaching on Sunday?" I probably me wanted to say, "No, nah, God, I got back to work. I'm whole lot of stuff going on." And then I was saying, "What I'm gonna do if God calls me off the job? <laughs> what are you gonna do in all of that, or or, or working in ministry?" I have to keep on going. It won't, that was the flesh talking, though, because that wasn't my spirit talking, because God already had kind of placed the word in me. But that was the flesh talking. I had to I had to take put my spiritual eyeglasses on and see what the Holy Spirit was doing and see what the Holy Spirit wanted us to do. And so how, how be it that we have to live in the truth, that we have to walk in what he's calling us to walk in, but we have to have an understanding. You know, how we can have an understanding, we got to lay before him. We got to continue to get in his word. We have to fast and pray and understand what he wants us to do. We just can't run and do what we, you know, God says the word and bam, we don't. Or, or yeah, yeah, Bishop preaching this again. Yeah, 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 yeah. Or, or, or no, that, oh, that's, that's my, my, my pastor preaching or that's my daddy preaching or whatever. It's more than that because it's God's word that is speaking to us and we have to live how he wants us to live. We have to walk the way he wants us to walk and we have to be able to grab hold on the way that he has to be grabbed hold. Just because we understand something don't mean that we, it's the way that we should, we should do it. And the Holy Spirit just drops on the enemy. He said the people knew how to move the Ark of the Covenant. They knew how to move it around, but because they did not 
research and seek God and see the word that when they did it the wrong way, when it fell, somebody died because even though they were doing God's will, they didn't do it the way that it should have been done. It had took David after they had to drop it off and it was there for, for decades until David came and looked it up. I mean, not decades. I mean, for uh, a while when David heard about what happened, he looked it up and see how the proper way of them to bring it and to carry it in. But even though they were doing God's will, even though they were excited that the, the art was coming back, it was not done the proper way. And if we don't study, if we don't uh, see God's face and understand how he wants it to be done, then somebody's going to get hurt. Somebody's going to be out of God's will. That's why it's important that we understand what God is saying. That's why it's important to be allowed that the Holy Spirit to teach us. That's why it's important to be allowed of oh, God to use our, our, our leaders and, and, and bishop and, and um, apostle and other pastors, and even me, uh, to, to teach and preach his word and give us understanding of how to do it. If Philip had not listened to the Holy Spirit and went to that Ethiopia, he would not have gave his life to God. He would not have got saved and got baptized, but and he was able to um, preach and teach the word unto him so he could have understanding and clarity of, of what was going on. We have to take ourselves out of the equation and just realize that we are what um, we are because God has called us to be that. Uh, one thing that uh, Bishop put in the um, the notes that God called us to be whole and not just to a job. That's the other. That's the second thing that been sticking in uh, in me every time I read it. That God, um, and I don't have it in front of me, but that God, God called us to be a whole, uh, and this is a whole person or a whole, and not just to a job. And sometimes we be in ministry. Sometimes it feel like it's just a job. It feel like. It's just a, a, a thing that we are doing or, or routine. And that one thing about me, I don't like routines. I don't, I know if, if something feels like it's becoming a routine to me, I kind of get bored real quick. I, I kind of get tired of it. Um, if, if you got to spice it up. You got to change it up a little bit if it becomes a routine because you become programmed. But with God, there's no program because every time you read the word, you get something different. Every time I can read the same scripture over and over again every single day, and God would give me something different. But when we program and figure out that this is, I got to do this because, because God says do it. That's when you fall into that place where the enemy can come in and he can step in and do that because you say, I'm just doing this to be doing it. But when you have a desire to do it and have the desire to be led by the Holy Spirit, then you will understand what God is doing and understand that this is not just a routine. You know, understand that this is not just a job. You understand that this is a whole thing that God is calling you for your wholeness, not, 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 not just to be holy, but for your wholeness. It's a thing that God is calling you to be whole. And I often tell people that God wants to have a, uh, um, that be with you not just on Sundays. He wants to be a part of your everyday life, everyday life, everything that you do. He wants to be a part of it. He wants to have a relationship with you, not just what you do on Sundays or Wednesday nights or whenever. He wants to have a part of everything that you do. He wants to be in that part of you. And I was thinking about uh, Pastor Ruby the other day, and uh, Mel. Uh, sometimes you have to go into our house or even see her at church and. She used to be over there in the corner somewhere just having a conversation with her and God by herself. And you see her, her hands moving go like this, her mouth be and be, and, they, and look at me as she, she having a conversation with God. You know, over everything. That's how we should be. That's how we should be. Willing to God, what do you think about this situation? Should I go now? Should I stay? God, what am I to do? Allow him to enlighten us so we can have his knowledge, so we can know what he's calling us to do, so we can know what he's bringing forth in us, so we can have an understanding of all that he's calling us to be, so we can be complete, so we can know everything that Bishop been, you know, been preaching to us and telling us for, for a while, that we can see You'll know what the hope of his calling and what the riches of his glory and his inheritance and the saints and 
what is exceedingly great of his power towards us. Do you understand that all of this stuff right here is for us already? That he already have all this stuff for us to be used and, and to walk in already? And all he wants us to do is have an understanding of how to use it. Uh, uh, people in the military, they just don't put them, throw them out into war without any um, uh, training. You, they just don't give them a gun and tell them this is shooting. They, you gotta go for a shoot. They have all that they need in the military. It's already there, stacked up for them. They just have to have the understanding and the knowledge of how to do it and how to walk into it. God has all of this, the hope of his calling, the riches of his glory. The riches of his glory is already stacked up and ready for you. The hope of his calling is already stacked up and ready for you. The power of his greatness is all that's why we don't have to worry about nothing would be understand that the power of his greatness if god be for us who can be against us the power of his greatness and the inheritance of his saints do you know that you have an inheritance when you have an understanding of who he is through the holy spirit but if we do not have that understanding if we don't have that knowledge if we don't have that situation then we are just a, a weak-minded uh, of things that we're not going to be able to go forth and how God be, wants us to do because we don't have the understanding of, 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 of being enlightened of what God is calling us to be. But if we know that the working of his mighty power, which he walked in Christ, he is raised, that he raised up from the dead. Do we not understand that we have that because he was raised from the dead, that we already have that built up in us? But the enemy don't want us to see it because we don't have the understanding. We don't have the knowledge of it because we don't want to be enlightened by the Holy Spirit and know that we have the power, that we have the strength, that when the enemy comes in like a flood, the Lord lifts up and stand up, that we can declare victory over it because we have the power we have the understanding but if we don't know the knowledge of it then when the enemy comes he can tear it down that's why when eve was in the garden uh when the Satan came he, he he took the word and he and he twisted the word unto her so she fell but she knew the word she knew that she knew what god wanted to do but she did not have the understanding of it and she did not have the the power to to say say no i'm not going to do this because god don't want us to do this god don't want us to do this he want us he made this for us he told us not to eat it and he said well should do, will you surely die he put question in her mind he put a question in her mind and made her change what she thought was what God was saying to something else. And the enemy does that all the time. He will put questions in our minds to try to change what God says. But when you have the enlightenment of the Holy Spirit, and when the Holy Spirit brings you into all truth, you can stand and say, like Jesus said, man should not live by bread alone, but every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. When you have the understanding of who the Holy Spirit is, and we have the enlightenment of who the Holy Spirit is, you can say it with power, and you can say it with authority, and knowing that the enemy doesn't have any power over you, knowing that he is defeated, knowing that when you have the strength of the Lord in you, you can stand up to the devil and tell them, I cast you out in the name of Jesus. I can, uh, you can plead over your family, where you can pray over your family and know that no matter what they look like, no matter what they're saying, God said that you are saved and I'm going to give you to give God glory over that situation. You can say whatever you want to say. You can act however you want to act, but I know that God is for me. So if he's for me, and I have the power that he has given me, I will know that it's going to be so. So you can say whatever you want to say. The world can say what they ever want to say about me. The world can say whatever they want to say about God, if he's real or not. And they can say, well, I know for a fact that he is. I know for a fact that he is. And I know for a fact that he's coming again. I know for a fact that he's coming for a people. Oh, ah, he's coming for a people. And I know for a fact that he is holding back right now. People always mocking God when he's coming back. When he's coming back, he's giving people a chance to repent. And he is calling us to, to be the people to go out and call forth his work unto the people and show them the light of who God is and show them his will and his word 
through the people, but we have to have an understanding of who God is. Because we don't, when we go out to the world and when we tell people about God, if they say one word, we get frightened, uh, we get uh, afraid and think that they're going to talk about us and look down on us. But when you have the power of God, when you have the enlightenment of God, come what may, I know that God has made me whole and I know that he can make you whole. No matter what. Ah, no matter what's going on in your life, we, we must have an understanding of who God is. We must have the enlightenment so we can have the knowledge to know and to go. And he gives us the strength. He gives us the power. It's already there for us. But we have to take off that the, 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 the fogginess and the darkness and looking through the glass uh, darkly and, and put on our spiritual glasses so we can see what God is saying. See above what the enemy is putting out. See above everything that the world is saying. See above what mom and dad is talking about. See above what people are talking about and actually see the God of our salvation. See what he is calling us to do because the enemy wants us to uh, not see. The enemy wants us to only see one thing, but God wants us to see Overall, God wants us to see over what the man is saying. God wants us to see the spirit of the man. God wants us to see what the world don't want to see, what the world don't want to be. And God showing us to be the light so we can enlighten them because the world is going to say that God's not real. The world is going to say that this is, 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 is for not. This is a waste of time. I could do what I want to do. I can say what I want to say. I can eat, drink, do whatever I want to do because I'm going to go to heaven anyway. I'm going to go to heaven anyway. Every time somebody dies, oh, they up in heaven. Every time somebody dies, they got T-shirts with them, got angel wings on them in the clouds somewhere. And we say that heaven is a prepared place for prepared people. So is hell. It's a prepared place for prepared people. And you have to have an understanding that we bring God's word to the people so they can have a life, so they have it more abundantly. He's calling us to be enlightened so we can have the knowledge to use what he has called us to be in. It's already there. We don't have to go get this if the stuff is already here. It's already here, but we can't see it because our eyes are not enlightened to it. We can't see it because we don't understand in what we see. We, we only see one thing, but God wants us to see the whole picture in him, knowing that the enemy is already defeated. Do you not realize that? He's already defeated. He's already defeated. And we have to understand that. Even though there's little stuff that's going on, he's already defeated. So start walking with our heads hanging down and feeling like we're not worthy enough of the call. Feeling like, and I'm talking to myself and everybody else that that this is not worthy. This is not worth it. It is. It's more important than life itself. Because I'm just saying to make sure that we become enlightened. Our eyes become open, enlightened, enlightened through the Holy Spirit, through through the pastors and the and the preachers, and they bring forth the word and they break down the word for us to eat, that we just continue to pray and fast and labor for God, so we can have this knowledge and we can have the word, so we can walk into it, so we can have everything that God's called us to be. That's still that's the message for today. That's what God is calling us to do, to be enlightened, to understand, do you know what you are seeing? That we pray and we walk into what God is calling us to do. So with that, Father God, I bless you. I honor you and I praise you. God, I give you glory for your word. God, I give you glory, hallelujah, oh God, for enlightening our eyes. Oh God, we ask you right now to change our, our thoughts and our mindsets, oh Father. Oh God, that we may see you clearly. Oh God, that we may hear you, Father, that our ears be inclined to your lips, Father, in the name of Jesus, that we will go forth in what you are called us to do, God. I pray right now, Father. Oh, God, everyone, everyone under the sound of my voice, Father. Oh, God, you build a shaking in them, oh, God. Uh, as you're stirring them up, oh, God, that they'll go and forth 
and do what you call us. We thank you for the hope, oh God. We thank you for the callings, oh God. Oh God, we thank you that they already laid out for us right now, Father, in the name of Jesus, Father. And we pray right now, Father, the Holy Spirit have your way. Oh God, speak to our minds, speak to our hearts, Father, in the name of Jesus, oh God, that we won't go astray. Father, we bless you and we give you glory. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen, amen. We truly thank God, hallelujah, for the message, amen. And um, I the right was, God was using it on the right to speak, amen. We we have to have our um, understanding and, and like how he used that comparison, hallelujah, about his glasses. He thought he could see, but until he put the glasses on, he didn't realize, he realized what he was missing. And just same as us, we have the Holy Spirit, but until we let the Holy Spirit reveal things to us or, or use the Holy Spirit, we, we don't realize what we're missing. And uh, I think that's why, like the Elder Wright has said just now, we uh, live, uh, preachers have preached, I think the Elder Wright preached one time, or somebody preached, we live below uh, our means, amen, because we can't see what God is doing. We can't see and understand uh, what the word of God is, uh, uh, the abundant life that we have. So, uh, Saints God, we got to remember NAFGOG's theme for this year. Uh, we had this kind coming out, but how, but by fasting and praying. So, we have to pray. We have to fast. We have to seek God in, in, in everything that we do. Uh, and the Holy Spirit is waiting to reveal things to us. He's waiting to reveal things. And uh, he wants to reveal things. Uh, and, and God wants us to live an abundant life. We, uh, But we have to understand, just as that Enoch needed someone to come by and give him some understanding. Amen. So uh, we thank God for the word, Elder. Uh, I know we can't see it, but we, man, I, I was stirred in my spirit Amen. I was one a couple of times when I say preach, preach, keep preaching the word. Uh, amen. Uh, uh, and so just, you know, we on Zoom and you can't see, but people are being moved and touched by the word. So continue to preach, be encouraged. Amen. Uh, we're not going to be in Zoom all, all the time. Amen. God's got a, a plan and we're just going to walk by faith and not by sight. Amen. So be encouraged, saints. Uh, hopefully, we'll see you on Wednesday night. Amen. And we'll continue our study. I want to I wanna hurry up and get you the, the riches of his glory. Amen. Uh, but uh, that right said, we can't see the, the, the hope of his calling. Amen. You, you're definitely not going to understand the riches of his glory. Amen. As us being an inheritance, uh, being God's inheritance. Amen. Uh, that right there should uh, make you be happy and shout, I am God's inheritance. <laughs> oh, my God, hallelujah. Man, hallelujah. You, you take care of your inheritance. When you know that it's going to be yours, you want to make sure that your inheritance is taken care of. My God, and I'm going to be his inheritance and his riches and glory. Uh, boy, hallelujah. God is good, saints. He's a great God. Hallelujah. And I ask you to continue to pray for us. Continue to pray for Faith Temple. Continue to pray that we uh, nap God, amen, be what God wants us to be in this time. Uh, the world is now saying that uh, the teachings of Christ uh, is, is not needed in this time. Uh, when you see, uh, God don't want you to turn your cheek now. You got to be uh, stronger than that. That's a, that's a weak-minded Christian, but the word of God is true by itself. If we're supposed to turn the cheek, Christ said, turn the cheek, give them the other one. We should need to turn the cheek. Amen. So the word is true, and we got to live accordingly. And what the right was quoting uh, that we were teaching, uh, God called us to a whole life, not a job. Amen. It's a whole life that God wants us to dedicate to him. So pray, saints, pray. Hallelujah. And we will continue to pray for you. Amen. But nothing else. Um, turn it back over to Elder Wright, and he can dismiss us the way the Lord would have it. Dismiss us. Amen. But Father God, we bless you, and we thank you again, Father, for your word. God, let us continue to walk in this. 
Father, all week long. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Father. God, complete, make us whole, not just holy, but whole, Father, walking in you, Father, in the name of Jesus, God. Oh, God, I pray against every sickness, every disease, every illness right now, Father. Continue to pray for the covering of your saints, oh, God. The hedge of protection around them right now, Father, in the name of Jesus. Whatever they, oh, God, put their hands to do on this week, Father, you bless it right now, Father, in the name of Jesus, God. We thank you for you uh, covering us, oh, God, even with the accidents, oh, Father, God, that everyone came out all right, God. We bless you. We praise you, oh, God, for what yes. your hands are on us, Father. Let us see it. Hallelujah. Oh, God, in the name of Jesus. Jesus, God, we praise you. We bless you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Oh, God, we thank you right now. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Uh, the blessings of the Lord be upon you. <laughs> we bless you in the name of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Amen.